tomorrow, Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer return to the White House for a meeting with President Trump. Now, this time, it's about an infrastructure deal. But in a moment, I'm going to tell you what the showdown is really all about. And today, the guy who spent eight years working there, Joe Biden, he tried mightily to convince you that this time, he has all the answers. But what's in his pitch in this phenomenal Trump economy? I think we have to, I think we have to rethink how we define what constitutes a, su a successful economy. He can barely get the words out there. Well, that's convenient, right? If you can't beat him, as in Trump's economic numbers, just change the way everything is scored. Because by traditional metrics, I'm talking GDP, wage growth, unemployment numbers in the stock market, Trump should be a lock for 2020. Like, whether you like his tone or not or his tweets, the president has beaten almost every target set by the so-called economic experts. Speaking of so-called experts, Nobel laureate Paul Krugman, he predicted an economic apocalypse, a global recession after Trump's election. Well, what happened to that? Here's today's headline in Forbes. Sorry, Paul. And what can we expect, though, under a President Biden? What will he deliver? Well, say goodbye to America first trade policies that, were, that are working. Biden was a big advocate for that boondoggle known as the Trans-Pacific Partnership. That would have offshored jobs to places like Malaysia and Vietnam. Bye-bye to the tariffs that have forced cheating countries to the table. And Biden would ditch all the protections for American workers found in deals like the USMCA. So if you're one of the 450,000 Americans with a new manufacturing job, your future will be far from certain under Biden. But remember, Joe pledges to bring you dignity. The dignity of work is my measure, which is about being able to provide security and share the joys with your families. The definition of dignity is that people should never be treated as a means to an end, but an end in themselves. When I think about work, I think about dignity. I think about a lot about my dad, a proud gentleman. My dad had an expression. He said, Joey, a job is about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. Of course, he fails to respect the tight labor market that Trump's policies have helped create. What does that do? That helps with restoring dignity because workers' wages are finally going up. More money in your pocket, more time to spend with your family. And now that all those dire predictions, they all failed, now that things are going so well, well, Biden has to kind of throw magic, reality-altering dust in the air to convince you that this isn't one of the best times ever to be an American who is willing to work. And by the way, it is. Well, Trump, of course, has an easy response to that. Remember, President Obama said manufacturing jobs are gone. You need a wand, a magic wand. We found the magic wand because they're coming and they're coming fast. I love the fact that wages are rising fastest for the lowest income Americans, the percentage rise. And we're now the number one economy anywhere in the world, and it's not even close. different from the Biden rally today. But now it's time to deal with Chuck and Nancy, because they're back at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue tomorrow with a framework for a massive infrastructure package. Remember, last month at a Democrat retreat, Pelosi floated a price tag of $2 trillion. Democrats also want to expand the definition of what infrastructure is, beyond, in other words, fixing bridges, roads, and airports to include things like enhancing broadband, water systems, schools, and housing. Why not? Why stop there? And predictably, Democrats want the cost to be borne by mm, people, meaning you, by doing what? Raising taxes, of course. Well, that's a non-starter for this president, because he believes a tax hike will slow this red-hot economy and, of course, betray his campaign uh, promises to be a tax cutter. And my question is this, will there be any big kumbaya moment? Imagine if they were swaying back and forth tomorrow, caught on camera, either during or after the confab. Well, look, it's hard to imagine. 
any cooperative spirit, given how their last meetup went down. If we don't have border security, I'm Chuck, with you. we're not going to keep it up. Let me you. We yes. want to do the same thing we did last year, this year. That Chuck, way. we can build a but much bigger let's, section let's with debate, more money. Let's debate in okay. private, okay? okay. okay. Yeah, let's place. debate in private. Okay. We came in here in good faith, uh, and, and, and we're entering into a, a, this kind of a, a discussion in the public view. But it's not bad, that, Nancy. That has, no, uh, no, it's called transparency. I, I, <laughs> it's called transparency. Let's close the doors, keep the reporters out. My friends, make no mistake, this whole routine tomorrow is as much about setting the narrative for 2020 as it is about getting something done that is traditionally a bipartisan effort, infrastructure. If infrastructure spending can pay for itself by stimulating the economy, creating its own revenue stream, well, I guess you can make the argument for it. But if, if not, we shouldn't do the infrastructure spending, at least not right now. Democrats and Republicans are addicted to spending your money, albeit they have different priorities. Republicans, remember, were itching to bust those Obama-era spending caps to jack up military spending. They thought it was justified. And Democrats, well, they're fine on spending money we don't have on stuff like green energy, free college, free preschool, free everything. We are announcing the most ambitious climate plan in the history of the United States. That means mobilizing $5 trillion. We are going to deliver a Medicare for all single payer system. Make college universally available with free tuition and fees. We will guarantee that right with universal pre-K and debt free college. There's no end to the spending, but this, my friends, is the national debt clock. And it's obscene that we are doing this to future generations. Everybody talks, I know, about modifying entitlements, changing them, reforming them, but no one ever does anything about it. Axios reported today, by the way, that Chuck and Nancy are carefully, though, preparing for this meeting tomorrow with the president, but they want to do it in order to gain maximum political benefit. Their true aim is to set up whomever the Democratic nominee is as the defender of the working men and women against the rich executives. And considering Biden's performance today, he needs all the help he can get. It's not just for people who get four-year college degrees, but those who compete for job training and trades and programs. Look, guys, we can do all this. Isn't that the angle?